Okay, we're, we're gonna go into the last segment, but I just wanted to point out this beautiful piece of art behind me. I, I couldn't throw to the segment without mentioning it because this is another local artist and a big thank you to Curly Hair Designs because we've kind of hung out a little longer than we expected so that we could do the throws from here and introduce all of our guests. It's a little cold outside today. Well, we're gonna end up in the Byward Market on York Street because Stacy Martin Lifestyle has rebranded herself from Kanye and you'll find out why, by the way, because maybe I even mis mispronounced it because it happens to her all the time. And I have a feeling she's going to take over the fashion world. I realized that I wanted to turn fashion into a career when I realized I can kind of pave my own way. So as a dancer, you have to follow what's out there, you know, what your, your agent sends you to, what auditions are there. Whereas in fashion, I can create my own vision whatever it is that I want to create. So if I want to go to trade shows, if I want to sell wholesale, I was able to do my own thing and I really liked that. And I thought that I have a very forward thinking mindset and I thought I can really go where I want to go. The rebrand started, first of all, because the company was called Kenya. I loved Kenya because the name meant light and I wanted you to feel the light that lies within you. But people could not pronounce the name. <laughs> they would say Kenya, Kanaya, Kenya, Kanye, who knows? The names were all sorts of names and they didn't really get the essence so we were losing the topic of the fact of having the light within you. And then I was in my, um, from my heritage in St. Kitts and Nevis and I was presenting to do fashion shows over there. And they asked me, while well, they were kind of butchering the name a little bit, Kenya, they asked, can I call you Stacy Martin? And I thought to myself, oh, my name is Stacy Martin. <laughs> you know, this is my given name. I thought this is an actually simple name. When you think about big brands, you think about Tom Ford, Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, Kate Spade, there's all these names, they're very simple. They're easily, they're phonetic, they're easy to understand, no matter if you're in Canada or anywhere in the world. And I thought this is really the time to change the brand, to change the name, and it's really time to scale. The pandemic affected my business with Kenya at first. I hadn't transitioned into Stacey Martin lifestyle, but the transition, the, the pandemic affected the business because everything closed. All my revenue streams closed. The storefront had to close temporarily. My trade shows, events, corporate collaborations, wholesale, speaking engagements, anything that I had to make revenue on, they all shut down. I, I was gutted. I, you know, I've been working at this for over 15 years and I didn't understand how at the time where I was about to scale, I felt like I was building the Jenga blocks and someone pulled the bottom block and I just came tumbling down and I couldn't understand why now. You know, and for a couple weeks, I just kind of sat and thought, I don't know what I'm going to do. So there's a lot of challenges in fashion. For me, particularly, I always, you know, I knew all the things I've done. I've done, like I said, New York Fashion Week, Toronto Fashion Week, Project Las Vegas, and then all these different events. I have over, you know, I have all these customers that love the product, but I wondered how come I can't scale? And I didn't look at the statistics of it all. And really, it is that 14% of female-run businesses in fashion, are it's only 14% that are female. And of um, black females, it's 0.5% that ever get venture capital funding. So I'm at a disadvantage. It wasn't, didn't matter how hard I was working to actually try to forge forward. But I kept asking myself, what am I doing wrong? And I just thought it was just... Work harder, Stacy. Just hustle harder. Make more connections. Network more. And I realize now that that is not just what that's about. It's really about the fact that the system has been there, um, set up for a fact that it doesn't allow me to have the same opportunity to rise with only less than 1% chance. So my idea right now is to scale the brand. And I knew that the only way that I can do this, not the only way, but the easiest way would be to do crowdfunding. And so when I do crowdfunding, there's a company called Front Funder, and they allow the community to fund into the company. So what that means is it's not just giving a donation, it's not helping me out, it's actually allowing you to be an investor in the brand that you love. So at starting at $250 and going up to any denomination that you want, you can put an investment into the company and then you become a shareholder of the brand. And so this way I can still get the same million dollars that I'm looking to raise, but I'm able to do it through community. And so my goal is to be 18% community owned. And it might just be that there's 4,000 amazing people in the community that give $250 and then I have 4,000 new shareholders. But I feel like that support and that love is really, it really means a lot to me because I know that the community is what brought me this far in the first place. And knowing that I am at a disadvantage with venture capital funding, this is the best way to go. 
So I do have a business advisor. His name is Adam Myron. He's from Ottawa. He is one of 100 Canadians to have started a company and live to, be, live to see it be worth a billion dollars. He has been my business advisor for the last two years. So he really helped me with getting the information um, just in myself or out of my own head to be able to put on paper so that I can scale the brand. There was a lot of things that I just thought I could just do by just doing more, doing more shows, hustling more, working harder, plummeting harder. And those things in entrepreneurialism are still things you need. But there was a lot of necessary keys that I wasn't doing that Adam taught me. One of the collaborations I have is with Nevis Tourism Authority. And my heritage is from Nevis. When I look at my island and where I'm from, many people are like me. And I wanted to be able to bring attention to this island. And also it's like an island paradise, it's an escape. So I wanted Stacy Martin lifestyle to almost have an essence of the island through the clothing. I wanted when anybody puts the clothing on that they can feel a bit regal, they can feel a bit warm, they can feel a bit cozy, maybe Bit powerful whatever the thing that I want them to feel in their life they can put the clothes on and and feel that sentiment hey Kevin camera guy I'm ready for my close-up you see I got the ring light working for me here I've kind of taken over Paula's space here at curly hair design I should probably get out of here so she can you know uh, you know make a living hey it's been another fantastic episode. If you want to find out more about what we're doing on Operation Support Logo, head over to rogerstv.com. And if you have a story idea, please reach out to our producer. Stay safe, stay healthy, Ottawa. We'll see you next week.